So let me take this opportunity <clears throat> and introduce, um, not introduce, but I will come into our today's session, uh, whereby I just want us to tackle our first uh, topic of uh, our unit, advanced taxation. And um, I just want us to look at um, the, the taxation of business income. Um, the, as we all know that uh, it means that uh, these are the business which already have a characteristics of profit motive. And uh, we have to be, uh, the, we normally have the revenue authority, which basically has the responsibility of taxing those kind of businesses for the purpose of uh, ensuring that the government have enough uh, revenue to run its own affairs. So um, as we all know that uh, we are already discussing the issues of uh, uh, the finance bill, I think it is very important for you to read it. It might be falling as part of your current trends um, in your exams. So it is very important to, to check on uh, what are some of the key things which are being discussed on it. But um, let me just engage on our topic of discussion tonight, uh, which is business income. And uh, we are saying it is one of the specified sources of income as per Section 3, Subsection 2 of the Income Tax Act. A business, um, sorry, a business can, can be operated as a sole proprietorship, partnership, or a company. Um, we shall be able to engage on um, a conversation whereby we have to be looking on the uh, how the sole proprietorships are normally taxed, how do we normally tax the partnership, and how do we normally tax the companies um, in general. So we are saying that a business, uh, sorry, the period which a business is operated or uh, the legality of the business is irrelevant when determining the taxable profits. And uh, basically what we need to be understanding is that um, the computation, because the, the examiner is going to be giving a certain problem, we are by, you just want to know whether you can be able to determine the um, the incomes and expenses which are already recognized by the Income Tax Act. Um, so in this case, we are going to be disagreeing with the... Um, I can see Don cannot be able to hear me. Um, can someone tell him to log out and uh, log in again? Because I think the issue is his mic. Um, it is from his end. Kindly someone to support me on that. So the period which a business is operated or the legality of the business is irrelevant when determining the taxable profit. And I was saying that uh, we are going to be having a lot of disagreements with the uh, with the, how we normally prepare our income statements when we are computing the uh, the uh, the adjusted business in, uh, adjusted taxable profits and all losses. How uh, what am I saying? It is because the um, the taxation there are some of the expenses which are recognized by the standards, but disagrees with the Income Tax Act. And I will just be able to give an example of uh, how we normally analyze our budgets, um, and also how are we going to be treating our uh, the disposal which might be gaining or loss of for the assets together with the depreciation and the loss of goodwill. Those are some of the key things which we have to be checking on to determine whether they are recognized by the tax act or not. Now, we are saying that the following conditions should be considered when, when evaluating whether a business nature of trade is carried on. Number one, we are discussing about a profit motive. And we are saying this must be, or this must uh, be the underlying objective and not the incidental objective. The business which we are operating in this aspect and we want to, to, to know how it is being taxed, it might be showing a characteristics of profit motive. Number two, the nature of the assets acquired and quantities involved. Um, basically, we are going to be looking on the um we are going to be looking on these considerations because already we have to be looking on them, the aspects of the assets, because we what we have to be understanding is that um, when all the assets in a class of wear and tear allowance are disposed at a profit, the profit under the Tax Income Act is normally recognized as the trading receipts. But um, if the business is still continuing, um, but if the business is going to be liquidated, we normally uh, call them um, balanced, uh, balance, uh, balance in charge. 
And uh, basically, if there is a profit in which we are going to be making from those assets, we normally call it, um, it, it such profit is normally recognized for the taxable income. Now, also, we have to be looking on the aspect of uh, um, if uh, if the, all the assets in class of WTA are disposed of at a loss, the loss is normally recognized as an allowable expense um, if the business is going to be continuing. But uh, one of the key aspects which you need to, uh, to, uh, to be keen when you are dealing with the assets is that the gain on disposal stroke proceeds um, from disposal of assets and untaxable incomes while the loss on disposal of assets is normally recognized as disallowable expenses. So those are the things that we need. Any disposal which you are going to be making in terms of assets, uh, it might be the profit or loss. They are going to be regarded, uh, they, we are going to be treating them as non-taxable income or disallowable expense. And I will be able to elaborate much about the disallowable expenses. I have said earlier that if we have any um any um a loss for instance like uh, the loss of disposal of an asset a disallowable it means it is not recognized by the income tax act it is not recognized the, the tax does not recognize its availability and uh, also for example if there is any gain we have um we have gotten from the the disposal of any asset uh such uh, such income is not is going to be regarded as non taxable income and i have said such income um, might be recognized, might not be recognized by the tax act. We are going to be checking on that when you are doing our questions. Now, let us look on the taxable business income recognized by the Income Tax Act. Number one, we are talking about the gains arising from buying and selling. And these are the things that we normally look on. Uh, for example, like an accountant, when we are dealing with these organizations, I normally see someone before he finds his or her own returns, he normally discusses about the receipts. We have to be looking on the transactions which are taking place within the organization, whether we are using the system or not. Number two, where a resident person carries partially uh, business in Kenya and partially outside Kenya, the profits are considered to have been generated in Kenya. And therefore, we are going to be taxing that in Kenya. And I will be able to give an example of Safaricom. Uh, Safaricom is a, is a business which already... Um, is operating its business across East Africa. But the, the profits in which they are going to be uh, generating from its own branches, uh, it is going to be taxed in Kenya because the parent company uh, is operating in Kenya. Basically, what the KRL normally looks is where the uh, the AGM normally takes place and where the, uh, the, the, the operations of the company, if, uh, where the operations of company is, uh, for instance, whether it is um, operated in Kenya or any other country. Now, number three, we are saying an amount of insurance claim or compensation received for the loss of profit inventory or revenue items. Ah, yeah. Another one, you are saying the bad debt recovered, which were previously written off and allowed as an expense. And I just want, as we continue uh, with these um, analysis later on, as I complete with the taxable business income, you will give me some few minutes to, to talk about what is an allowable uh, bad debt, uh, which we are discussing as an allowed. How are we going to be classifying the bad debt? Because they are they are normally grouped, not as the way you normally do them um, in, the, in the preparation as per the standards when you are preparing your income statements. So I remember I was able to explain the issues of the balance in charge and trading receipts. But allow me to look on the realized foreign X gains. And basically, we have to be checking on a, a trick which examiner normally uses. Examiner will never give you, um, it, it will never tell you that the foreign X gain were realized. So it is upon us to, de to determine uh, the aspect of realization by making an assumption in our computations. Um, and this is very crucial. That is where you normally find that uh, in taxation, when you look on the marking scheme, the tax does not have similar answers, but students might be getting the equivalent marks. For instance, there is a student who is going to be saying, they, they already, because the examiner is going to be giving you the income statement, which is already computed and they're giving a bit of notes. Later on, this uh, examiner will want those students to be able to elaborate, looking on them. Um, some of the expenses and income which are recognized and which are not recognized in the, under the Income Tax Act. So in that aspect, it is upon you to make your assumption. There are some students who will say the foreign exchange gain, which was used in the computation of the 
uh, of the net profits was realized. And when we talk about realization, it means it is recognized by the tax act. Another student will say, part of the uh, foreign exit gain, which is already involved or included in our incomes under the income statements, it was unrealized. And when we talk about unrealization as an assumption, it means that it is not recognized by the tax income, uh, tax income act. I will be able to explain that uh, later on as we do our illustrations, and I will be able to show you how that normally um done. Now, number seven, we are talking about the reduction in specific provision for bad and doubtful debts. I have said I will get back to bad debts later on. Let us look on untaxable incomes. And we have said, number one, the income from foreign investments. Uh, number two, we are talking about reduction in general provision for bad and doubtful debts. You're going to be checking what is a general, what is a specific as part of the classification of the uh, uh, bad debts. Number three, we are discussing about the additional capital introduced by the owners of the business. It's going to be treated as non-taxable incomes. Then number four, any income which is exempted from tax under the first schedule of the Income Tax Act. For example, dowry inheritance. And uh, when you are going to be doing something called tax investigation later on, um, um, in uh, as we cover our syllabus, we are going to be looking on them. Um, how are we going and how do tax recognizes the dowry and inheritance uh, when you are doing the tax investigation? But because when you are doing the tax investigation, it means you have to be, um, you normally group all the assets and liabilities uh, uh, which are being, um, uh, which are already owned by the directors of the company. Let me talk about the owners. Now, let us look on the allowable expenses, which are basically recognized by uh, the Income Tax Act. And we have been told that under the Section 15 of the Income Tax Act, recognize the following allowable expenses. Now, we have been told the capital allowances. Remember, there is um, a difference between how you are computing your income, uh, in, uh, your income statements when you have been told by uh, my colleague um, under advanced financial reporting. Uh, we are going to be discussing about the issues of the depreciation of the assets, which you normally calculate it, so that you can be able to arrive to net book values. When you come to the taxation, we don't recognize um, um, depreciation as the, the loss of value of an asset. But um, the tax normally recognizes the capital allowances, where the assets are normally categorized in different classes as per the revision in under 2020. We shall be able to check on that. Number two, we are talking about the trade bad debt and increase in specific provision for bad and doubtful debt. I will be able to cover that before we do any illustration. Number three, we are saying expenses incurred prior to the commencement of the business, which would have been allowable if they are incurred after the commencement of the business. For example, we are looking on the staff training. Those are already, um, it is good to be treated as an allowable expense of the business. Number four, we have the legal cost of registration of a lease of not more than 99 years. So we have to be saying that any lease, right, which has taken place within our, our territory, um, it is an allowable expense recognized by the tax, um, the tax, uh, the tax act um, that um, it should be within 99 years. If it is goes beyond 99 years, it is normally an untaxable allowance. Number five, it might be 50 years uh, allowable expense, uh, 40 years, it is okay, but should not superpass 99 years. Now, number five, we are talking about the legal cost of defending uh, business pr property rights. There might be one of the uh, directors who, which were able to uh, to violate the rights um, of the of the land, for in, for instance. So we are not we are looking on the aspects whereby. Um, when, for example, the directors are going to be making their message in terms of, for example, paying of the returns on the right time as stipulated by, by the KRA or Revenue Authority. In that aspect, you have to be knowing that uh, anything that already involved negligence, it is punishable. And that is one thing that you need to understand. So every time you are going to be having those kind of cases, then it means that they are going to be treated as disallowable expenses of the business, right? We shall reach there and we see how we are supposed to be working on that. 
Now, number five, number six, we are discussing about the legal cost on the issue of shares or any security to the members of the public on listing the shares in a security exchange in Kenya. And that one will fall under the legal expenses. Remember, the only thing that we can be able and recognize under the Income Tax Act is obtained um, when we are looking on the um, additional funds, for instance, if we want to launch a new project, um, the Tax Act normally tells us that um, the only thing that we can be able to use is um, issuing the ordinary shares to the general public for subscription. But any other way of, uh, of raising finance, it is not recognized by the Income Tax Act. So this it means, because the examiner is going to be telling you that uh, we, we had uh, loan, uh, loan um, processing, that is not recognized by the Income Tax Act. Now, let us continue. We are discussing about the capital revenue expenditure incurred in the preparation of land for the purpose of planting crops or prevention of soil erosion. And that is okay. But I will be able to tell you because some of the uh, these examiners are stubborn, they are going to be giving new land as part of the asset. But once we reach under the capital, uh, capital allowances topic, you will be able to understand more about the classification and how the assets are normally um, taxed. Number nine, any expenditure of scientific research related to the business, interest expense made on the borrowings uh, made to develop the business, advertising and uh, promotion expenses, amount contributed by the employer on behalf of the employee to a registered retire, uh, retirement fund and to a member's club. Number 13, we are discussing of Donation to charitable institutions subject to the following conditions. One, donation is for alleviating or reducing distress to the community. We are also being told the donation is not refundable. We are also looking on there is a direct or indirect relationship between the donor and the recipient, and a donor does not have a direct benefit from the donation. Then the last one we are saying there is evidence that the donation was paid. And that is why we are supposed to be producing the receipts. Then um, the last point, which is number 14, there was a revision uh, for last year regarding the, the losses which have been made by the business um, uh, for the with a limit. Um, currently, the, the losses, they don't have any limits. They are limitless. So uh, they are going to be carried forward forever. Maybe the current finance bill uh, states otherwise. Now, let us look on unallowable expenses, and they are provided for this before by Section 16 of the Income Tax Act. They are expenses which are not wholly and exclusively incurred in the production of income. For example, anything relating to personal, uh, private, or household expenses paid for before by the business. Number two, school fees paid on behalf. Uh, number three, legal fees with the exemption of those specified as allowable. I am number four, general and other provisions for bad debts. Number five, capital expenditure or loss of a capital asset. Number six, we discuss, I have already discussed about depreciation, impairment, amortization, and similar expenses. Number seven, any, any paid off taxes and expenses related to the payment of taxes. We can talk about consultancies, penalties, fines, and interest. What am I discussing here? I will be able to elaborate uh, uh, later on. Number eight, you remember I talked about if you treat a foreign exit gain as unrealized, then it falls as a disallowable expense to the business. Number nine, we are talking about non-trade bad debts. What, is, what are those? We shall be able to check on that. Then number 10, we discussed the cost incurred in acquiring loan. And I was able to, uh, to update on you about that earlier on. Now, they have the format for the computations of the taxable business income. Um, it is here with your notes. Um, I will be able to share with you uh, because already it is something that is already um, shared uh, um, in your platform. But one of the key important aspects which I just want us to look is when, for example, you are being given this taxable profit. You can see this one. After the computation, uh, which is already given by the examiner, then the examiner is going to be giving you additional information. These additional informations are going to be assisting us to come up with a computation of adjusted. It should be adjusted taxable income. It should be adjusted. 
adjusted adjusted taxable income and one because we are doing a tax investigation you just need to check to 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 to, to check on your income statement take the net profit provided by the examiner then start working on um uh, rectifying the errors which were made by the accountants when they were preparing their income statements and that is where you can see here we have said add back this should be disallowable we add back all the disallowable expenses all the expenses which are not recognized by the tax act and then we also said add adjustments due to errors add omitted incomes then we are going to be lessing allowable expenses not yet deducted together with the incomes, right? We look on the non-taxable income and you can see it, I have already stated it there. Any income which was or, uh, used as an income when you are computing the income statement, then it, when you look on the Income Tax Act, it is not recognized, then you have to deduct. Why? Because it increased your net profits. So to adjust it, you need to deduct that kind of an income. We are also going to be looking on the income whose withholding uh, tax is final. The withholding tax, these are the incomes which the, the withholding tax is not subjected for further taxation. And uh, I will be able to check on the dividends which we normally receive uh, from circles. They are subjected for withholding tax, which is final. Adjustment due to errors. Income from specified sources. We are also going to be looking on that Later on, we are going to be getting our adjusted business income. But before we get to the taxation of sole proprietorship, I am just requesting you to take your pen and then we go back for, to analyze. Uh, we just want to analyze. Um, let us analyze our bad debt first. Just want us to analyze our bad debts. Because already, if you don't have that analysis, I don't think you will be in a good position to understand how it is being done. Let us go there. Let's do our bad debt here. So I know today you are ready, right? It has been long, long wait, but we have commenced. So remember, you are doing um advanced taxation correct so under our advanced taxation let us look on topic one we just want to analyze topic one which is our business business income our business income there is our business income. So in this aspect, when we are analyzing our business income, um, I have said because already we have discussed a lot of things, I just want to look on bad debts. And when you are going to be analyzing our bad debts, they are normally categorized into two. Our bad debts are categorized into two. One, um, we normally have general uh, provisions for bad debts. General. Then we normally have specific. We normally have general, and then we have specific. So in this aspect, when we are discussing about the general, because the bad debts, you know, these are amounts which we, uh, which are still with our, our customers. So in this case, uh, for instance, we are going to be looking, this is the, the, the job for the credit controllers, whereby they are going to be looking whether they are increasing or decreasing. So in this aspect, um, it is very important to be checking the bad debt is provided in the question, whether they have increased, whether we have an increase or we have decrease. So we are going to be checking on increase and then we also have a decrease. We have an increase, we have a decrease there. So we just want to know, when we have an increase, how do we normally determine or how do we normally treat the general provisions for bad debt when there is an increase? Um, we These one are going to be treated as disallowable expenses. 
disallowable. They are disallowable expenses. Ah, yeah. When there is a decrease, when there is a decrease, it is basically treated as um, a non taxable income. Non taxable income is going to be treated as non taxable income there. Now, or I also want to look on the specific. Specific is the one which is recognized by the Income Tax Act, right? So in this case, if there is an increase, it means it is an allowable expense of the business. Allowable expense. And if there is a decrease, it is going to be treated as a taxable, taxable income. It's going to be treated as a taxable income of the business, a taxable income of the business. Now, but I just want to put NB here because you are going to be getting a bit of challenges when you are doing your illustrations there. NB of ours, we say all provisions, all provisions are disallowable. All provisions are disallowable expenses. All, dis all provisions are disallowable expenses except except all the provisions are disallowable except specific provision specific provision specific provision for bad debts so in this sentence it means any kind of provision which is already made in your questions is a disallowable expense any any which is going to be made any provisions which is going to be made other than the, that one for specific, it is going to be treated as a disallowable expense. Other problem which I know students normally get when you are when you are tackling the question regarding to the business income number two should be the treatment of the debit notes. You normally look at the debit notes, right? And credit notes. The debit notes and credit notes. But um, I just want to put them very clearly that uh, debit notes, debit notes, debit notes, correct and undercharge. They normally correct and undercharge. Debit note normally correct and undercharge. While credit notes, While credit notes, while credit notes correct and overcharge. These are the terms of an accountant, right? They correct and overcharge. Now, we are talking about um, the aspect whereby, because the most important aspect is understanding how you are going to be uh, looking on them, examiner is going to be talking about credit not received, credit not issued, and so on and so forth. But uh, allow me to give you in a ledger form so that you can be able to understand it. In a ledger form, when you are looking on the treatment of both, um, you will be able to see it looking like this. Because the, the 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 two let me just give a definition for the second one by the way because i have just given for the debit notes so let me give for the credit notes i say credit not received right i have said debit notes correct and undercharge while credit notes correct and overcharge that is okay so when you are going to be preparing your debit uh, debtors control account under topic which i will introduce later on uh for incomplete records Right now, the debit notes normally increasing. Debit notes issued, issued. Debit note issued increasing. It normally increases our sales. The debit note issued increases your sales. What about the credit note issued? The credit note issued. The credit note issued reduces. Your sales. That is why it is on the credit side. The credit not issued 
reduces your sales. Now, it means the other ones which we talk about, the debit not received and the credit not received, affect your other ledger, which we normally discuss is about the creditor's account, the creditor's control account. The creditor's control account, right? And you can be able, if you are wise enough, you can use a control uh, understanding because you can say if debit not um, under the debtor's control account is on the debit side, then when you go to the creditor, it means the debit not received, the debit not received, right? The debit not received increases your purchases. The debit not received increases your your purchases. What about the other one, the credit not? If it is on the credit side, then also here you can treat it on the on the debit side. Credit not received, credit not received reduces uh, reduces your purchases. They normally reduce your purchases. That is one of the key points of understanding. I just wanted you to to have up now. Now, I just wanted to put another very serious uh, 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 point. And I know that uh, Imad is still writing here. So you can allow me to continue analyzing my, uh, my points up, up there. So in this case, um, you'll be able to find that um, you'll be able to find there are other problems which examiner will introduce to you. Number three, and these problems normally relate to opening stock. Normally have opening stock. We have purchases. We have purchases. Closing stock. Closing stock. And sales. These are one of the key things which are going to be giving you headache when you are doing your you are doing your illustrations. Now, when I look at um, the first one, right? Because already we know how we normally compute our our gross profit. I know that knowledge you have. I just want to put this point so that I can put an illustration and you see that the opening stock, opening stock and purchases, opening stock and purchases have an inverse relationship. They are going to be having an inverse relationship. The opening stock and purchases have an inverse relationship with profits. They have an inverse um, with, that is, they have an inverse relationship with profits. When they are overstated, when they are overstated, profit is understated. When they are overstated, profit is understated and vice versa. So we have said, if you are going to be overstating the opening stock, and we are going to be doing an illustration here, I see if it is true that if I overstate our opening stock and purchases, what is the effect uh, relating to the gross profits? Now, we also need to put this point clear. We say that sales, closing stock and sales, closing stock and sales, closing stock, closing stock and sales, closing stock and sales have a direct relationship. They normally have a direct relationship, right? They normally have a direct relationship with profit. They normally have a direct relationship with profits. That is, we say, that is, when they are overstated, when they are overstated, 
when they are overstated, profit is also overstated. Profit is also overstated and vice versa. So I just want, I know that uh, we were able to complete copying on the lower side. So allow me to wrap here. And I show you the example. Let us now say we are preparing, these are our normal, um, these are our normal uh, gross profits. These are our normal gross profits. So I start with my sales. My sale is 200. We less cost of sales. We start with the opening stock. My opening stock is 50. Purchases, which we normally had, is around 30. Then we have our closing stock. Our closing stock is around 20. What is our uh, cost of sales? In this case, I can see my cost of sales is 60. What did that there? Our gross profit is how much? Our gross profit is around 140. Our gross profit is 140. But if, for example, we are going to be, if now I'm an accountant here, a bit confused, right? Or erroneously, I was having this challenge. Now, my sales remains at 200. Let us go to the cost of sales. We start with the opening stock. So my opening stock is how much? It was 50. Let us look on the effect it has if we overstate it to 60, right? And then our purchases comes to 40, correct? Then our closing stock remains the same. Our closing stock remains at 20. So when I look at it, our cost of sales now is around 80. So how much is our gross profit? My gross profit is 120. And that is why we say, it. if this uh, opening stock and the purchases are going to be overstated, profit is going to be understated. You see, our profit was 140. But once you overstate them, you can see that there is a reduction in your, in your profits. There is a reduction in your profits. Let us look on uh, what is happening to the second point, which we say, it that the closing stock and the sales have a direct relationship with the profits. When they are overstated, we have said profits are overstated and vice versa. In this case, let us look on it here. For example, now, let us my sales remain the same. For example, the sales, we say, let us overstate it. We overstate it to 210. And then my opening stock now remains to the original one, right? Because we want to look on the effect. So it remains to 50. Then here we have 30. Then we say our closing stock is 30. What is happening to our cost of sales? It comes to 80. So what is our gross profits? My gross profits, my gross profits will be how much? I can see our gross profit now comes to 130. Is it 130? 30, 30, 50. This should be 50. This is 50, sorry. So to 10 minus 50, I know I'm getting around 160. So what is happening to our gross profits? If you overstate the closing stock and sales, you can see the, the gross profit is also overstated. The gross profit is also overstated. That is what we are discussing about the issue. Sorry, the issue regarding to overstatements of the closing stock and the overstatement of the um and the overstatement of the of the sales, the overstatement of sales.
Now, if that is well done and dusted, then and also we have illustrations here. Let me just give some minutes for the ones who are copying to finalize so that I can be able to check on the last one as we engage on uh, illustrations. As we engage on illustrations. When you finish writing, you just type there, finished, on our chat box. Thank you, Don. I now think you are able to hear me. Beatrice, think you're okay. Imadi, also, you can tell me whether you are finished. I have. Thank you. Thank you. So, let me carry out an analysis on um, legal expenses because I just want to stay them here. I think that this one is already done. So I just want to group the legal expenses so that when you are doing your questions, you are able to understand the legal expenses and how they are categorized. Now, thank you so much. So let me start by looking on the legal expenses because they are also going to be the legal expenses. And I'm going to be starting with the allowable legal expenses. Allowable legal expenses. So when you look on the allowable legal expenses, right? Number one, it should be the legal fees related to Number A, we talk about um, the preparation and renewal preparation and renewal of trade agreements. The preparation and renewal of trade agreements. Number two, we talk about preparation. Preparation and renewal of employment and renewal of employment contracts. Number three, or C, we have the preparation and renewal, the preparation and renewal of a lease agreement. of up to 99 years. Preparation and renewal of a lease agreement of up to 99 years. Number D, debt collection. Debt collection and settling customer disputes. Debt collection and certainly customer disputes. The other one would be obtaining number E, obtaining of finance, obtaining of finance by issue of ordinary shares, by issue of ordinary shares, by issue of ordinary shares for general public. Subscription. The general public subscription. Then the last one, number F, it will be successful defense.
successful defense against an alleged successful uh, alleged breach of contract I have talked about successful defense against an alleged breach of contract an alleged breach of contract now let us look on our disallowable expenses the disallowable expenses the disallowable legal expenses disallowable 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 legal expenses disallowable legal expenses and they are the legal fees which are going to be uh related to a they are just the opposite of these ones but let me put it down there Preparation and renewal of a lease agreement. Preparation and renewal of lease agreement. Preparation and renewal of lease agreements of more than 89 years. Preparation and renewal of lease agreement of more than 99 years. B, we can talk about transfer of property. The transfer of property, it might be, that is buildings. Buildings, you can put building there, motor vehicles, land, etc. All right, number C, we can also say raising of funds, raising of funds other than issue of ordinary shares, issue of ordinary shares to the public or subscription. Number D, right? Preparation of partnership. Preparation of partnership deeds and memorandum memo of association. MOA, the preparation of MOA. E, we have breach of contracts. Breach of contracts. Then F. F here, we discuss about court fines and penalties. Court fines and Penalties, court fines and penalties. Court fines and penalties. Let us continue by looking on illustrations now from our past paper. I think you have a link for these papers. So I just want to start with our a background question or um, a question which is going to be setting a good background for us. Um, November 2017. November 2017, we have question 5B. There before it was called public finance. Nowadays it is called advanced taxation. So they removed the advanced aspect of public finance and become a unit of its own. So we have question B. I think Beatrice should be reading for us, please.
Vijus, can you read? Dawa Limited provided the following income statement for the year ended 31st December 2016. Continue. Mm -hmm. Information. The cost of goods sold includes opening stock valued 2,200,000 while closing stock was stated at 2,800,000. The opening stock was overcast by 10% and closing stock was undercast by 30%. The legal expenses comprised acquisition of bank loan, settling customer disputes, preparation of memorandum of association, liquidation costs, patent rights, notice to defaulting debtors. General expenses comprised Purchase of processing machinery, purchase of factory building, provision for corporation tax, purchase of furniture, director's allowances, VAT appeal, credit notes received, delivery van, debenture interest, bad debts analysis. Mm -hmm. Staff costs include, advertising include, required, a statement of adjusted taxable profit or loss for the year ended 31st December 2016 and cooperation tax payable if any by Dawa Limited. Thank you so much. Um, the question is already being provided here. The examiner has already given you the net profit of 7,521 as per the reduction of the of the Kenya shillings to thousands. So in this case, it means that um, these notes which are provided here, it is the analysis of what took place within the income statement. So it, it is our duty now to go through uh, the analysis as per the notes which are attached, and uh, we see whether the, the things were done right as per the requirement of this, so that we can be able to determine how much should be taxed. So that is what we are doing right now. Now, in this aspect, um, it is very important, and I will be just uh, going slowly, the first thing that I'm supposed to be doing after um, I get this kind of a question, it is to look on the title. The title is very important. It, it is normally called Dawa Limited, and uh, we have to be writing our title uh, because we are looking for 2016 adjustable taxable profit or loss computations. Then we are going to be starting our analysis. So let us go to our board. I think you have the link with you. If you don't have, Kimadi, if you don't mind, you can share the link for questions with your colleagues. Now, here we have Dawa Limited. So we are discussing about 2016 adjusted taxable profits, stock loss, stock loss computation. taxable profits or loss computation. Now, we have Kenya shillings here in thousands of shillings. Kenya shillings here in thousands of shillings. We normally start with our net profit. In this case, we are going to be saying that is our reported profit. Our reported profit as per the question I have said is 7,531. You normally take the balance of the profits as per the income statement there. So uh, the, the reported profit of ours, we have 7,521. And because we just want to do an adjustment, we are going to be adding back disallowable expenses. We just need to do disallowable expenses, disallowable expenses. And uh, the disallowable expense which we are going to be having we are going to be raising our concerns from the notes which have been provided under the additional information. That is why I required you to have your notes by your side. Now, in this case, under the additional information number one, we have been told the cost of goods sold includes opening stock valued at 2.2 million, while the closing stock was stated at 2.8 million. All right. So the opening stock was overstated by 110. Uh, by 10%. So it means the 
the opening stock given it is 110%. And we say the opening stock normally has an inverse relationship with the, with the profit because once you overstate it, you understate the profit. So it means this profit we are seeing here, it is understated by 10%. So what are we going to be doing? We add back the overstated so that we can, we just need that 10% which was over overstated, right? Which made the reduction of our reported profit. So we add overstated opening stock, right? Our overstated opening stock, and you can be, uh, you can see here, remember the one which you are being given, the 2200 which we are given there, it is um the proportion for that uh, opening stock is 110% because it is overstated by 10 so what about the 10 which is overstated kama unataka tutumilie kitambo nasema hivi 2200 is equals to 110% you ask yourself nataka hiyo 10% yenye wali overstate so in this case it means i just need to take 10 over 110 times 2200 10 over 110 times 2200. How much are we getting here? Very simple. 10 divided by 110. And I multiply by 2200. I'm getting 200 shillings. That is what they overstated. That is what was they overstated. Let me continue with the same statement. We have been also told the closing stock, uh, the closing stock was undercasted by 30%. The closing stock was undercasted by by uh, 30 percent so it means the closing stock which is what was used in the preparation of the income statement amounts to 70 percent it means this if 20 if 28 i think it is 2800 is equals to 70 percent because that is how it is you ask yourself what about the 30 percent right what is the 30 percent we add it back because we say that the closing stock normally has a direct relationship with the, with the profit. If, for example, you have understated the, the closing stock, then you have also understated the, the profit because the cost of sales will be more. The cost of sales will be more. So how about you say understated closing stock? So I have said it is 30 over 70 times 2800, right? 30 divided by 70. That divided by 70 times 2800. We are getting 1200 shillings. 1200 shillings. I think I've done with the additional information number one. <clears throat> now, number two, we are being told that um, there are some of the legal expenses which were incurred there. One, there was an acquisition of bank loan. We say it when we were analyzing our legal expenses that the only channel we can use for the uh, for the raising of funds by the organization should only be issuing of shares to the ordinary shares to the public. Any other source of funds, it is a disallowable expense. So that one we add back here. Acquisition or bank loan acquisition of bank loan amounting to 90 shillings correct then we also have settling customer disputes we say that is an allowable legal expense it is okay the way they did it well and fine we also have preparation of moa we say it that it is an allowable expense preparation of MOA. So how much is our MOA? 260. Continue. We also have liquidation costs. And uh, these are the costs which we can just incur um, when the business has already been, uh, when we stop doing the business. So the liquidation costs are disallowable expenses. Right? Liquidation costs amounts to Liquidation cost of ours is 468. Okay. Then also we have patent rights. It's allowable. They were incurred before the business was put in use. So the patent rights of ours is 340. They are capital expenditure, 340. 
Then we have not to defaulting debtors. They are okay because Nakumbuka, when if you are credit controller and you have worked, you have to be sending uh, those demand letters uh, to the defaulting debtors. Let us go to the general expenses. And I will be able to say this. Any purchase of an asset is not recognized under the tax uh, income tax act. So in this case, what is normally deducted as an expense is a capital allowance. So what are you supposed to do? You normally add back all the purchases that we have done, then we deduct the capital allowances. Let's start with the first one, the purchase of machinery. The purchase of machinery. We purchase the machinery at 800 shillings. We shall be able to deduct them later. The other one, we have the purchase of factory building. Factory building. Our factory building amounting to 1280. Another one is the provision. We say it under the provision. The only provisions which is recognized under the Income Tax Act is only one. The provision for uh, the specific provision for bad and doubtful debt. Any other is a disallowable. For example, like the one we are seeing in our question, provision. Provision. We are talking about the provision for COP tax. Operation. Uh, COP tax. Provision for the COP tax amounting to uh, 394. The provision for COP tax 394. We also have the, the purchase of furniture. The purchase of furniture. The purchase of furniture. We say all the purchase. Sorry for that. Let us continue. So the purchase of furniture, we are also regarded as a, we have said it is regarded as a disallowable expense. We normally deduct the capital expenditure. So in this case, we are talking about 360. 360 shillings. Now, the other one we have direct allowances. Remember you are dealing with a company and those are the allowable expenses. They are okay. We have VAT appeal. Our VAT appeal amounts to how much? We have 120. Then we also have credit not received. Credit not received. You can do an assumption there, Ekimadi, and you say the credit not received related to the fixed assets which we were able to, uh, to buy. Fixed assets. The credit not received, it relates to the these assets. And this person is going to be getting a mark, by the way. So you don't, you don't, you just the credit you say it relates to this, it is not relating to the stock. So in this case, uh, you are going to be putting around 135. 135 there. Then also we have delivery van. The delivery van that we have amount to 720. 720. 720. Now, there is an analysis which we are seeing there because already when you look on the debenture interest is an all is allowable expense. I just want to go to number four where we are analyzing the bad debts. And because we have said the specific provision is an allowable expense, we don't need to check on it whether there was an increase or decrease. But we can also look on the general provision. We look whether it is an untaxable income or is a, it is a disallowable expense. So let us check. And we see there. Now, when you look on the general expense, when the year was starting, our general uh, uh, provision for bad debt was around 180. But when the year was ending, it was around 167. It means there was a decrease. And therefore, we have an untaxable income there which we are going to be deducted later on. So if you add this paper, you could have put a star there, knowing that we'll be coming back. Now let us look on number five. We have been told the staff cost includes staff development costs. We said, yes, the staff training are okay. 
staff welfare, welfare expenses, we say they are fine. Now, we also have pension contribution, we said correct, but we have an issue with personal computers. They are supposed to be given capital allowances. Personal computers. So our personal computers amount to how much? 360. Our personal computers amount to 360. Number six, and the last additional information we have been told, advertising include neon sign, neon sign, capital allowance. Our neon sign is 129. Right. We also have depreciation. This care to depreciation, you know, is a disallowable expense. So our depreciation is how much? 24. Right. We also have carriage out to a disallowable expense and higher of billboards. We know those are okay. Now, I just want to go up there now. Ukimalizana additional information. Let us now go to the expenditures. Expenditures. We have legal expenses, uh, sorry, the general expenses, we have analyzed them, but we don't recognize impairment losses. So I just write it here, impairment. Our impairment losses are how much? Remember, it's a continuation here. So our impairment losses amounts to 390. Impairment losses is 390. We also have bad debt advertising. We have donations. It should be to the charitable organizations. This is for the disaster, disaster funds. So our charitable for that is a disallowable amount of 250. Then after the donations, we go to the property taxes. They are disallowable, any form of tax. Is that disallowable uh, expense? Property taxes. Um, one thirty six because you cannot be able to deduct an expense, right? Which we are computing to get that form of tax. Any form of tax which is deducted is a disallowable expense. Branch closure costs. Branch closure costs is a disallowable expense. Our branch closure cost amounts to 178, yes. I see it's 178. 178, 178. And then the legal expenses we have analyzed, staff costs are allowable. So once we finish this, because of my space, let me just push it on this side. We say, let us list allowable expenses. Stock, none, taxable income. Let us do that, please. Allowable expenses, we deduct non-taxable income, right? So let me start with those non-taxable incomes. I can see there are some of the incomes which are already in our, in our statement. For example, we start with the capital gain on sale of assets. Is that non-taxable income? Capital gain on sale of assets. And this one amounts to, I can see we have 468. The other one we have insurance recovery. Insurance recovery of motor vehicle, 450. That is the insurance uh, recovery. We have dividends. We say we also deduct the dividends with the withholding is final. These are from subsidiary. Subsidiary, subsidiary, subsidiary. The dividend from the subsidiary amounts to 942. 9.42. Then also we have foreign exchange gain. I say it, one student may treat it like this. Foreign exchange gain. Or foreign exchange gain is how much? Someone may treat it as realized. Another one may say, if I say it's a realized here. 
If I say realized, you put that. It means the way it was treated in the question, it was correct. But if another student put unrealized here, then he put the figure. Let me repeat again. For an extended game, if you say it is realized, it was correctly used in the computation of the income statement. It is the income of the business. But another student, if he says unrealized, he puts the figure. All the two students, all the two students will be able to get the marks. Now, the last one will be the interest on fixed. On fixed deposits. So the interest on the fixed deposits amount to 300 here. Once you finish with the non-taxable income, let us look on the allowable expenses, which were not deducted. And that is where the computation for the capital allowances comes in. The capital allowances. Capital allowances. Let me start with the ones which we say they are not recognized. They are not recognized, but the capital allowance should be recognized. And they are part of the disallowable. So the first one will be the purchase of machinery. Machinery, because I say the capital allowances are normally categorized in different categories. Now, under the revision of March 2020, uh, based on the classification of the assets, it was reviewed the rates for the for the industrial uh, investment deductions uh, from 100 to 50 percent. So the machineries uh, uh, are, are normally granted 50 percent in the first year of purchase. So it will be 50% of 800. There before it was 100%. So in this case, it is around 400. Ah, yeah. We have factory building. Factory building, 50% of, the 50% of 1280, this is around, uh, is it 640, correct? Is 640. Then also, we have the purchase of furniture. The rate for the furniture, it is under the class of uh, wear and tear. So the furniture is normally granted at the rate of 10% times the cost of it, which is 360. So it will be 36. Ah, yeah. I can see also we have delivery ban. Delivery ban. The rate for the delivery van, they were, I, I know that uh, some of us, we might have done the CPA a long time ago, but you remember we used to have class one, two, three, four. They were, they merged class one to three, and then they granted that class 25%. At which rate? 25% we look on the rate for that. Where is it? Delivery van of ours, 720. So 720 divided by four, 720 times 0 0.25, we get 180. We get 180. Then we have, that is a delivery van. We have computers. They also have a rate of 25%. 25% of 360. I think we should be getting around 90. Correct. We have neon sign. Our neon sign should be how much? So let me check from there. Our neon sign is 129. So it normally qualifies at the rate of 10% times 129. Don't be shocked. This, this is a topic of its own. We shall be covering it later on. We shall cover that topic on its own. So I think we are done with our analysis. So the additions of ours. I will get the summations, the summations of those there. Then we shall put there, we do adjustments. And what we are supposed to be getting at the end of the day, it is normally called adjusted. Taxable, taxable income, adjustable, adjusted taxable income, stock loss, adjusted taxable income, stock loss computations. So I think it is okay now. So let me start by doing the additions as you complete writing. So the first one is 200 plus 1200 plus 90 plus 260 plus 468 plus 340 plus 800 plus 1280 plus 394 
plus 120 plus 135 plus 720 plus 360 plus 129 plus 24 plus 390 plus 150 plus 136 plus 178 I'm getting around 7734 so let me look on the other side of uh deductions we start with 468 468 plus 450 plus 942 plus 300 plus 400 plus 640 plus 36 plus 180 plus 90 plus 12.9 i'm getting something closer to 3518 Point nine. This is what we are supposed to be deducted. That is the deductions. So I will take 75, 21 plus 77, 34 minus 35, 18.9. Now you'll be able to get the adjusted taxable income as 11, 736 point one. I think that answer you will not be able to see it. So let me rub here. They say it is 11,736. It should not be the adjusted, but it should be the business income because I can see we have other income somewhere. So this should be adjusted business income. Adjusted business income already there. Then we need to add our other income. I see the only income that we have here. Let me just rub here. I know that you are finished with this end. So our other income, our other income, our other income we have, the only income which is already recognized for further taxation it is this one, right? Interest on fixed deposits. Interest on fixed deposits amounts to 300. Then, when you look on those dividends, I will say the withholding tax at the rate of 5% is final. They are not subjected for further taxation, and I put dash. I also get a mark here. Don't forget that. So what I'm getting down here should be the uh, we are so supposed to be getting the the adjusted taxable income. So if, for example, I add three hundred on my answer, I'll we'll be able to get twelve thousand zero thirty six point one. Twelve thousand zero thirty six point one. From there, from there, allow me to compute the tax payable. Our tax payable, you know that the company, a limited liability company is subjected for corporation tax rate at the rate of 30%, unless otherwise stated in the question. So it will be 30%, we multiply by 12, 0.6.1, so how much is this? Times 0 0.3, getting that 610.83. Then we normally less the withholding tax relief. The withholding tax relief that we have, there is also another kind of topic which I will share those two notes with you, discussing about the taxation of uh, investment incomes. I will be able to share it. It's just a theoretical to understand why this is subjected to further taxation and how it is going to be giving a relief. There is a withholding which, once we do a business with a partner, and that partner which we agree the business uh, is a tax agent, he normally withholds a, a certain proportion, right? And that proportion which he, he, he withholds, he is going to be submitting it to the revenue authorities. 
So in that aspect, it means my partner has already um, I mean, he's stuck it to the revenue authority. So in this case, he is going to be getting the, uh, the that withholding. So the, the the interest on fixed deposits, the uh, the uh, the interest on fixed deposits qualify for a withholding tax of fifteen percent of the gross, which is three hundred. So fifteen percent of three, we get around forty five. So how much is our tax payable? Our tax payable should be 3610.83 minus answer. We are getting around 3565. 3565.83. 3565.83. I know up to that point you are well or you have understood. I think we have understood up to that point. If you are done, you just let me know so that we do our last illustration as we close our. So let us continue. We have a question in November 2015. Question number 5B. Your mother, you can read for us. Lima Limited is a company incorporated in your, in your country. <clears throat> the company controls 80% of, of the share cut of Shamba Limited, which is also incorporated in your country. The following is a statement of comprehensive income of Lima Limited for the year ending that past December 2014. <clears throat> Gross profit, 59 to 20. Uh, depreciation, legal expenses, loan interest, electricity, share in salaries and wages, telephone, <clears throat> patents and loyalty page, travel expenses, Other, other incomes, patent lot received, loan interest received, dividends received from Shamba Limited, there is that net income. Additional information, the loan interest paid included the following one, interest of 800 to relating to a loan acquired to purchase of office equipment, Interest of 258,000 relating to a loan used to acquire shares of Shamba Limited. Number two, salaries and wages include passages of Kenya shillings 1 million and 8,000 sent to an director who located, located to another country. Travel expenses including 155 
in to a new employee hired from a foreign country. The loan interest received will lead to a loan issued to an employee of the company to purchase a residential house, not included in the income, was rent received of Kenya shillings one million three six that eight thousand from one lease <clears throat> gross of loss of Kenya shillings three ninety seven thousand meant on another lease. <clears throat> An operating loss of 189 had been carried forward from the previous eight years. This loss was included in salaries and wages expenses, expense as, as at that first December 2014. Loyalties, loyalties of 145,000 were due for receipt as at that first December 2014, but had not been recorded in the books. Legal expenses included, scroll down. Legal expenses included, one, one, one Kenya shillings, 176,000 spent on disposal for of some property and equipment. Kenya shillings, 48,000 incurred on debt collection. Kenya sharing 78,000 in card on defending the company against a claim for breach of contract. Number nine, patent loyalties received were from Shamba Limited, were those paid to a Ugandan company. Number 10, capital allowances for the year ending that first December 2014 were agreed with the commissioner, with the commissioner at the Kenya shillings one million nine that two thousand required a statement of adjusted taxable profit and loss for the year ending that first December twenty fourteen. Yes. Thank you so much. You can see there you are awarded ten marks, and I said the first thing that you're supposed to be doing here once you have this question, you just need to. Um, you just need to write your title. You can see I was trying to write it. So the 2014 adjusted taxable income computation. Then we have two columns of Kenya shillings. We reduce our shillings to thousands. Right. And then we are going to be starting with our reported, reported profits. So I think uh, the profit is the one which was given here. Let me check. Yeah, they gave our net income of 49,951, right? We add disallowable expenses. We are going to be getting this from our additional information, right? Now, the first thing that will be given in the question we have been told, there was an interest on loan paid include the following. The interest of 285 related to a loan acquired to purchase the office equipment. So in that case, you say it is a disallowable interest on loan. The first one is to buy equipment. It is a disallowable expense. Amounted to 285. The second one was to buy shares, which is also a disallowable expense. Um, amounted to 258. Let us continue. We say that uh, the salaries and wages include passages, which is okay, uh, because we normally talk about uh, uh, a relocation um, of um, resident. Um, these ones basically normally apply to the people who have uh, certain knowledge in a certain field, who are basically uh, needed by the organizations to, uh, to bring their expertise. Um, and the, the purpose in which we are bringing them is just to serve the employer alone. So in that aspect, we that amount is an allowable expense of the business. Um, I will be able to find the correct word which we normally use for re relocation and allocating them within the country. Number three, we have been also told the traveling expense include 155,000 uh, paid. Um, to a new employee hired from a foreign uh, uh, country. I have said this is okay. 
The other one is the, the loan interest received related to a loan issued to an employee. We shall be able to engage on that. Um, the other one we have been told not including the other income was rent received of 16,30,000 for my one lease. Um, and then we also been told that uh, not included, it was not included there. So there is no any problem. There is a gross loss of uh, 397,000 made on another lease. No problem. Then number six, we have been told um, an operating loss of 189 has been carried uh, forward for the eight years. Remember the previous, during this period, it was supposed to be carried forward for six years. They're written off if it is not completed. And But uh, today it is carried forward forever. So we are not going to be by that point. Note number seven, we have been told royalties of 145,000 were due to re for receipts as of that far December 2014, but has not been in recorded in the book. So we are going to be recording them on other income. So there is no any problem. Uh, we are going to be recognizing them when we are doing other incomes. Now, number eight, we have been told the legal expense included 176,000 paid on disposal of some property and equipment. You can see here, we are looking on the legal expenses on disposal. It is a disallowable expense. So let me write here, legal expenses. The first one was for the disposal of equipment. There was a disposal of equipment amounting to 176. The second one, the second one was relating, we have been to 48,000 in card on debt collection. We said is allowable, but we have 78,000 in card defending the company against a claim for the breach of contract. And then the breach of contract, we say it should be successful to be an allowable expense. So one student might be writing it in this way. Uh, we are talking about uh, company defense. Company defense for breach. For breach of contract. One student will write it was successful. Because we say it's successful defense. So if it was successful, it is an allowable expense of the business, right? We put a dash. Another student would say it was unsuccessful and he put 70,000. Number nine, patent royalties received were from Shamba Limited, while those paid were to a Ugandan, um, a Ugandan company, Izoni Makelele. Then the capital, which were agreed with the, the capital allowances agreed with the commissioner were. 19, we shall factor them later. Let us go to expenses as per the, the income statement provided. We have depreciation as a disallowable expense. Our depreciation amounts to, our depreciation is 48.72. 48.72 there. Then we have been told legal, loan interest, allowable, electricity, allowable, salaries and wages, allowable, telephone, allowable, we have patent, royalties paid, we are okay. And then uh, um, we have, um, the last one, we have tra travel expenses, okay. So let us deduct here, we less allowable expenses, clock, non taxable incomes okay so let me start with the capital allowances which were agreed with the commissioner we are not going to be calculating any other capital allowances which were agreed with the commissioner were, were amounted to how much we have been told in our last uh, point were 1932 so in this case we are not uh, calculating them then um, let us look on other uh, items which are, are subjected to deductions. Let us go to other incomes as put um, in the income statement. We start with the patent royalties received. All of these are your marks. So the patent royalties received amount of 2,772. The other one we have been told we have loan interest received. The loan interest received, that is here, the non taxable income, loan interest received. And uh, it had some additional information. 
That is where we are factoring it, 183. It was from the employee. Now, we have dividend received from Shamba Limited. So we have dividends from Shamba. Dividend from Shamba Limited amount to 5,628. 5,628. I think we are done. Um, let us first get to adjusted business income. Let us get our adjusted business income. So first I do the summations as I can see them there. So we have 285. 285 plus 258 plus 176 plus 4872. I'm getting 55. 91. Then the second one we have 1932 plus 2772 plus 193 plus 5628. You are getting 10,525. What is our adjusted business income? So I take 49, 951, right, plus 5591 minus my answer. I'm getting around. 45,000, 0, 17. 45,000, uh, 0, 17. <clears throat> Correct. So let us proceed to other incomes. other incomes. So on the aspect of other incomes, what are we supposed to be factoring in here? There was a rental income. There was a rental income. Rental income. I will also be able to teach you next time about the rental incomes. We normally have commercial and then we normally have residential. The residential um, houses are normally taxed when they the 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 overall um income um exceeds 15 million right they are normally taxed the same way as the commercial houses if they are not if they are below 15 million then they are exempted from taxation so in this case the residential income we say i can do an assumption another student will will, will just put that figure but me i can do an um an ass assumption i say they belong to residential, and if they are residential, they are not subjected for further taxation. <clears throat> the second one will be royalties. Our royalties amounts to how much? So when I look on the royalties, there before we had some royalties amount to 2772. And then there is other ones which we were able to receive under the additional information number number seven. We were able to get around 145. So how much is the, the total? 2772 plus 145, I'm getting 2917. Right, 2917. Then the last one, we are talking about dividends. The dividends which we received were from Shamba Limited, right? They were from Shamba Limited. But what is a Shamba Limited here? Um, Shamba Limited is um, a company which we are controlling a certain proportion as far as information number one. So in this case, we don't subject it to any further taxation. So what is the total here? Because we need to get the adjusted, adjusted taxable income. So I just take 45.017 plus 29.17, getting around 47,934. 47,934. Mm -hmm. Let us go to tax payable. Let us do a tax payable. And because I limited, I say corporation tax rate of 
subjected, 47,934. We just need to multiply here by 0.3. We get 14,380.2. Then we left reliefs with all the tax relief. And with all the tax relief of ours, we have what? We just have some, um, we have royalties, right? We have royalties. We have royalties here. The rate for royalties is 5% of the gross amount, 2917. So 5% of 2917 is how much? We are getting around 145, 145.85. What is our tax variable? So 14,380.2 minus answer, 14,234.35. That is how you deal with the questions. And uh, I'm not going to be giving any assignment today. I'm not giving any assignments.